changes to a registration. Again, in a perfect world, the student finds the class, they register for the class, they pay for the class, and that's good. Uh, it doesn't work that way. So <clears throat> you've got students that register and two minutes later call and say, oh, I forgot about yada, yada, I need to cancel, I need to transfer. Well, you've got options. Number one, you can cancel the registration and refund all or portion of the money based on your refund policy. Number two, you can cancel a registration and keep all of the money. Typically, that would be if somebody does not let you know they're not going to come and you know they, they, they don't show up at class uh, and afterwards they say a cancellation and you say, no, sorry buddy, unless you let us know before the class, you know, uh, that's on you. You can cancel the registration and rather than refunding to the student, you can refund the student's money to escrow. And again, escrow is a great tool that allows you to, to track money for students without having to go through the refund process. And then finally, you can transfer a registration to a different class or a different person. So I'm going to run through those. <clears throat> Canceling a register, well, here's another example here with no payments involved. Somebody's registering, and then they said right away, you haven't made a payment yet, but they said, i got to cancel. Well, what you do, all you have to do is manually click the cancel button, put in a note in the fee adjustment description what you did, and you negativize, you negativize, sorry about that. You put in a negative entry to back off the fee, so the total due is zero, and at that point, you're done. You've, you've got it marked as uh, they were at one point registered, but then canceled, uh, so that the goal is obviously on a canceled registration, if they don't owe you and you don't owe them, there should be a zero balance on that. Uh, refund wizard. Uh, if you're doing refunds, and again, um, let me show you where that's at in the system, because in, um, in doing registration, let's find a registration for Miss Lori here that has, and we'll go to Hamlet Check. I think I've got some registrations. Edit a registration. So that if I've got a registration and I need to make a refund to the student or the person says, I've got to cancel, it's ahead of the class. Uh, and so you go to payments. There is a tool called Refund Wizard. And when you click on that is where you get the set of tools that we were showing here. You have options. Refund to the student, which would show as a negative payment going back to the student. Refund to escrow. Uh, and then you could choose how much you're refunding. Total current payment. So if there were multiple payments, maybe um, they paid part by check and part by a credit card, and they want to refund the credit card payment and keep the check, or vice versa, you can do that total paid minus the fixed amount, a fixed amount or percentage of the total. So it'll do the math for you uh, in terms of how much you're doing refunds. Uh, the wizard will also automatically cancel the registration, zero out hours credits. The one thing you do need to do is to indicate why is, why is this registration being canceled, uh, or if it's full refund, partial, or you had to cancel the class. So that you put in a note in here as to why this is being canceled. And again, the descriptors for this come out of the codes area. And again, there is optional fees, main fees, and then registration fee adjustment uh, descriptors <clears throat> that we're looking at right here. All right, I want to kind of show you where that came from, uh, the reason why. The other thing you can do under the registration payment or under the payment screen is transfer payments. If you've got a case where somebody writes you a check and after they wrote the check, they figured out they wrote it for more than what was due on this class, you can actually transfer part of that receipt that you've recorded here to either escrow uh, or to a different registration. So again, there are options to be able to adjust money uh, if a payment has been made uh, on a particular class after the payment's recorded and you've got the receipt. All right, uh, escrow. 
Uh, again, I'm going to ask for a show of hands again. How many of you run escrow accounts or do escrow accounts uh, rather than allow a student to put money in escrow rather than doing a full refund every time all the time when they say I have to cancel a class? All right, Rita, we got a couple there. Anybody else? Lisa, all right, all right. Yeah, the escrow, again, if the big issue here is that you make sure this is okay with your business manager, your business office. But what it allows you to do is to give students credits. Think of it as a savings account for the student or a rainy day fund. I don't that it's it's to your benefit <clears throat> if you can avoid writing a check to a student for a class that they couldn't go to and they've met the rules for how you you do a refund then especially if that student is one that says, well, I can't make this class, but I know I want to take another class. I'm just not sure what schedule will work. Uh, and you say, well, I can hold that money, that refund of yours in escrow and let you apply it to a future class. So again, the escrow has a lot of options there. The other thing about the escrow is that it, you might even have a different policy. If you say if, the, if you want a refund on a class that you are canceling and it's within two weeks, you pay a $20 penalty. But if you were to let us hold the money in escrow for you, we'll let you credit the full amount of your payment toward a future class. So your point is you get an opportunity to keep that money in circulation without giving it back to the student and depending on them to take the initiative to come back and take a class. So I always like the idea that I'd like to play the banker on that, and especially if and we're not trying to mess up the student or to mess with the student, but if that's a student who is legitimately saying, yeah, I'd like to take another class, you say, let me help you out. I'll hold that money in escrow, and you just let me know when you want to use it. We'll apply it to your class. Okay, canceling a registration with an active billing. <clears throat> Again, when we have billings out there, uh, and incidentally, we do have a webinar on billing and invoicing. We're just not going to have time to cover it, obviously, in the five minutes left. Uh, this is a busy topic. Uh, but we talk about that. When you cancel a registration that has an open billing, one of the things you'll want to do is generally void the billing records, because otherwise, even though the registration may be canceled, unless you void the billings, uh, managers' accounts receivable will say, that's an active bill. Until you tell me to back off, I'm going to try to collect that for you. So that's, that's a good thing, but you just need to d deal with the billings if you want to fully cancel. Grouping registrations. Again, we're, 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 we're getting to the tail end here, but lots of ground to cover. A couple of different places. One, a person is registering in several courses and want to make one payment. And again, it could be doesn't have to be with credit card. They could be making a payment by check. But the point is, one individual is doing, think of it as shopping cart. You're doing shopping carts inside a manager, the back office part. <clears throat> you can do several employees from one company have registered, and the company wants to group all of them and pay for them together in one check. Uh, and then two or more children from the same family register for a camp, and the parent wants to make a single payment for both the kids. So the idea of multiple courses, multiple people, one payer, where you're going to be paying for it at the time, credit card or check, is generally when you want to be dealing with grouping. Again, if you're using company invoicing, that is an optional module for some of you that have uh, been around and might not have that module. But if you've got company invoicing and it's billing, um, I would recommend not doing uh, grouping. It's a lot simpler. Just say bill to Aceware, bill to Aceware, bill to Aceware. The company invoicing system will take care of grouping those together for you. OK, uh, doing grouping, clicking on the group button. Once you add a registration, and again, on a group inside student manager, you would typically always, you'd add a registration, you would not make the payment. Uh, so you would add one registration, don't make a payment, go to the second registration and get the fees, and then click the group button. And then when you do that, it will take you to the group lookup. Now, <clears throat> for those of you familiar with the old 
ACEWARE group lookup, the model was that it would show you the most recent registration that was done by group number, the ID number, the course code. It showed you the name and last name and title, but you couldn't search by it. The new grouping lookup of Matthews, this wonderful magical lookup, now lets you search on name or the course title. So you can find Joe Schmo way down in the database to group them with the registration that you're in right now. So I think that is going to be wonderful for you folks that are doing grouping. Whoops, come back. Speed registration, special tool now. We're, we're just about done and we'll try to get to this to get, you get your questions. Doing speed registration entry is done from module registrations. What you'll do is you'll select a class and it'll take you to the setup screen. Uh, what is the base registration fee? You would set the status, the tracking code, the reg code. You have an option to create a group on the fly, <clears throat> assign the hours, CEUs, a default grade. And then you can either add names, which will let you select names from the name table, or use the import wizard. And what the import wizard allows you to do is add names from an Excel spreadsheet. And this is wonderful for backloading registration from contract training or course programs. If you're getting an Excel file of students from a contract training course from a company or from the instructor, it said, here are the names of the people who were on, a, on an Excel spreadsheet that were at the XYZ in-house class. <clears throat> you can use the import wizard to bring those names in. 